Hello again, it's Professor Hendricks, and let's talk about dictionaries. Now, dictionaries are quite possibly my favorite data type in Python because of their versatility, and they can be used to link anything to anything, and you can think of them as sort of a mapping from any Python data type to any other Python data type that you want, whether it's numbers to numbers, like a mathematical function, or an actual dictionary. So the, the keys in this case would be a word, and the value would be the definition. So in general, a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs where the key is associated with a particular value. So let's see an example here. So if I enter the Python terminal, I can define a dictionary or declare a dictionary by a pair of curly braces like so. And I can also use the dict function. And the dict function can be used to both create an, a new instance of a dictionary or to convert another data type to a dictionary. And if I print out D, I can see that it's just represented by this pair of curly braces right here. So to add values to a dictionary, I simply would do the following. I'm defining a, a key here, in this case the word Mickey, and the value is the word mouse. And so I use a pair of square brackets to access key value pairs. And so for example, something like this, and I can print out my dictionary and I can see that it's still represented by this pair of curly braces. And in fact, it is a curly brace enclosed comma separated collection of colon separated key value pairs. So you can see that each of these key value pairs is indicated by a colon here, matching up the key with its corresponding value. And so if I want to print something out, I can do something like the following. I could say Mickey is a, and then do, something like this, and I get Mickey is a mouse. And so essentially, I'm accessing the value that I've already stored by calling it again. And, and so this is very similar to a list. So recall when we defined a list. And so a list being, I don't know, it can be anything. I'm just creating a list of ints here, but it, of course, could be strings. And so if we want to access values of our list, we also use square brackets. And in this case, we use an index. As we saw before, that was a zero-based index. And the dictionary is analogous to that but we would use the key and access the value accordingly. But both lists and dictionaries use square brackets like so. Let's motivate this further with a biological example. So let's take DNA. So DNA is double-stranded and it forms this double-stranded helix. This is not a very good illustration of the helix itself, but it serves to illustrate the complementary nucleotides that are paired in double-stranded DNA. Now, when you download a DNA sequence for a genome, you will find that it's just one of these two strands. And it's, I guess in this drawing, it's the top strand. And there's an implied second strand that's complementary to and reverse in direction. Meaning, whereas this sequence goes A, C, G, T in what's called the five prime to three prime direction, the other strand would go A, C, G, T in the other direction. And where this is the five prime and this is the three prime. So the key idea that I wanted to show you here is that each nucleotide has a complementary nucleotide. So G is complementary to C, T is complementary to A, G is complementary to C, and those are what pair up in double-stranded DNA. And we can in fact compute what the reverse complement sequence is. In other words, if this is the forward strand, this top strand here, this bottom strand going from right to left is the reverse complement strand. And so it's both reverse in direction and complementary in sequence. So how do we go about creating a complementary a dictionary or a dictionary that might give us the complementary nucleotides. So I can either go about defining it explicitly and say that A is complementary to T and I can essentially define these key value pairs explicitly in this um, curly brace enclosed collection here. And I guess this can be kind of tedious to go through all these different characters, but it can be done and I'll just do it real quick. I'm almost done and T is complementary to A. So now if I want a particular nucleotide, I might say, well, what's complementary to A? T is complementary to A. What's complementary to G? Well, that's C. Um, here's a cool way to create this complementary dictionary, and it uses the zip function. So I already told you about the zip function in the case of lists, how we can take two lists and zip them up so that the elements of the two lists match up into a list of tuples. And I can do the exact same thing here. So here's a cool way to do it, and it turns out you can zip together strings as well as lists and other data types. But let's, let's do the string example here. And maybe later on I'll do a video on, on zip itself. 
So if I take my, my nucleotides right here, just to find a string bases, and so it's just the four DNA nucleotides in alphabetical order. And one thing that I noticed was if you do reverse alphabetical order, by reversing that sequence, check out my video on strings if you don't know why colon colon negative one is the reverse of a sequence, but when you do so, the nucleotides match up exactly with their complementary nucleotide in reverse alphabetical order. And this, I guess, is just a coincidence, but it's kind of a cool coincidence because it enables me to do the following. I can zip together these two strings, bases and bases of colon colon negative one. And I get this weird zip object. Uh, you saw last time I converted it to a list and I can see that it is a list of tuples and the tuples perfectly match up to these complementary nucleotides. And it turns out I can also use the dict function to convert this directly to a dictionary and Python understands what is meant is that the tuples represented here are, correspond to key value pairs. And I have my nucleotides paired up exactly creating this complementary dictionary. So I could assign this to a variable and just as before if I want to know what's the complementary nucleotide of T I have it here and I created the exact same dictionary as shown here. How about another example? Translation occurs by tRNAs pairing up with mRNAs within the ribosome and each tRNA is associated with a particular amino acid and translation occurs through the genetic code which is basically represented here by these three nucleotides in the mRNA, the codon, pairing up with a complementary pair of three nucleotides, or I guess I should say reverse complement, triplet, in the tRNA called the anticodon. And if I go here, this is actually a graphic from the Wikipedia article on the genetic code, I can see that this table shows the genetic code. And so, for example, I might have three nucleotides here and the corresponding amino acid right here. So UCC right here is the codon that's translated into serine. And pretty much every one of these uh, triplets has a, has a matching amino acid. There's three of them that are stop codons. That's UAA, UAG, and UGA. And as this graphic illustrates the many genetic diseases that are associated with mutations in DNA that affect the genetic code. So I've went ahead and defined a dictionary here and this codon map is exactly the dictionary of the genetic code. And I can paste this into my Python terminal first and I'll paste this giant thing right here. And if I print out my codon map, I can see that it is still represented by this curly brace enclosed comma separated list of colon separated key value pairs and I can see very clearly each codon corresponding to each amino acid. So in other words if I have a particular codon that I'm interested in, I don't know, ACU, and there it is. So that's translated to a T. In this case it would be threonine, I believe. And so, you know, basically any codon that I want and so Furthermore, if I, if I try to access the stop code on, in this case, in this dictionary, it's represented by an asterisk. So I'm going to use this dictionary later on to show you how to translate RNA to protein using basic Python. And you can see the utility there. A couple side notes um, that I should mention. When you zip together two things and convert it to a dictionary, of course, it doesn't have to be two strings. So we saw before I created a list of strings here and a list of ints the first three non-zero whole ints. And, and so in this case, I could create a dictionary that, that takes me from one to the other. And so we just simply do something like this of L1, L2, and there's that dictionary. So the, the values of the dictionary and the keys of the dictionary, I wanna stress that they can be any data type. They don't have to be strings. They don't have to be ints. They can be pretty much anything. You can use tuples. And later on, we'll see that a very powerful use of a dictionary is a dictionary of lists where the key is, for example, a string, and the value is a list. A good example of that is storing gene models for a particular chromosome. In that case, the chromosome name might be the key, like chromosome one, and the value might be a list that contains all the gene models in that chromosome. That's something that we'll come back to later, and until then, I'm Professor Hendricks, and I'll see you next time.